the discrepancy, I got a phone call, was in August. Pastor Freeman, I think, had a service for herself sometime in August, the middle of August, or maybe the end of August. The convention was September, starting like in the um, in the um, beginning of September, because our convention always be around be around the beginning, always be around. Always be around the um the band like the first, the second. Okay, so now we're going wait a minute. Okay. So the convention was set August, let me go. September, it started the 31st, so it was the 31st of September, okay, so August 31st, oh, sorry, August 31st was the beginning of the convention, from August 31st September 1st and September 2nd. Okay, so our little discrepancy had to happen somewhere in the middle. Like we had a service, we had a we had a rehearsal. Let's say we had the rehearsal the, the 11th and the 12th I got the call. Pastor Freeman had a service for herself, let's say she had it that Friday night, the 17th, and I went to it. Go go back, go back. I'm busy, I'm busy, come on now. So. So now, September, we had the convention, right? Went on, went on, went on. Did what we got to do in September. October did what we did. October, da 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 November. Now we're coming to November. So November 28th, I think we had Joy Night at Bible Way. People were acting a fool. Um, then November 29th, 28th, I guess is when she wanted me to preach. She wanted me to preach that Friday, which was the 30th. She called me the 28th. I answered her on the 20, 28th. And the 30th is when I, told, when I got sick. So I got sick November, and I was sick December. Didn't make it to Thanksgiving service. Somewhere up in December. What did you say, preaching? What is that? Okay, so I was sick in December because I was sick, if I'm correct, was it Thanksgiving or Christmas? I know I was sick Thanksgiving, but I went out. I went out because Thanksgiving was the 22nd. No, I wasn't even sick. No, I wasn't sick. The Lord let me go hang out with my kids. I had a great, that was the best Thanksgiving ever. I'm telling you, you talking about food, we had food. Oh, my God, them people treated us like we was kings and queens. Ain't nothing like being in the shelter. Go in the shelter. You you get treated like, like, like you royalty. That's where all the money is going. The money from the government and the city is really helping the homeless people. They really is. They really is. Especially families. I can't say too much about single people, but families, because they sure enough helped us. Okay, so the 28th, the, the, the 28th is when I got, no, the 30th is when I got sick. So I was sick like two, three weeks, because I didn't go to church. I didn't go to church. 
I didn't go to church that Sunday, which was the second. I didn't go to church that ninth. And I don't think I went to church that 16th. So if I'm correct, no, I don't even think I went on Christmas night. I'm trying to think if they had a Christmas service. But I was at the church for the Christmas service. I'm, I can't even remember, but I know I was sick. So now, yeah. So I got sick August, September, October, November. I got sick three months after the altercation with everybody. Yeah, because for a moment I was saying, well, if I got sick right after it happened, was God punishing me? But then when I think about how I went about and what was going on and how the people was acting towards me, and, and I had to realize that, no, the Lord, I got sick for a reason, and he kept me home, and he took care of me. And even though I was going to go and preach, you see what I'm saying? I was going to do what Pastor Freeman asked me to do. You see what I'm saying? And I'll be honest with you, I never was asked to preach. I can't remember. I could have sworn that service was for the convention. Unless they were starting. Unless they were starting because, see, she didn't have nothing this year. Because we in what? What month is this? November? Right? So this is when the service was last year. The service was in this month. Not around this time, but this month. So we'll see if she have that same service this year and whether she have me ask me to preach this year because I'm thinking, I'm remembering what's, what's staying in my memory is that it was a service that she was given to build money for the convention, right? So I don't know who else preached. I think Macmillan was a preacher because they was talking about it when I went back to church. So now that I'm thinking about it, I did get to church. And, um, no, they wasn't talking about it, no. It was told to me that old Mac Millen, she preached a nice sermon. She was this and she was that and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing negative to say about anybody that brings the word of God. My thing is make sure that it's the word of God. So I'm presuming that it was supposed to be me and Mac Millen that was bringing the word that night. And since I didn't come, she did it by herself. It was just her because apparently it wasn't nobody else preaching with her. So now, see that? That's how I got to use. I don't really have to use it for my teeth. The reason why I do use it is because it just keeps it steady. Or maybe because it's just a habit. Because listen, what? What, Elizabeth? Come here. What you want? What you eating? Um, a nut. Huh? A nut. A nut? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you want to do? You want to take that off? Mm -hmm. No, you need to keep that on because you ain't got no pants on. Okay? Okay. You got to keep this on because you ain't got no no pants. Your mommy say, I guess your, your mommy say she coming, okay? Okay. All right, you're going to go back in the room and watch the show. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, so I was supposed to preach that twenty, that thirtieth, but I was sick on the thirtieth, right? So it went kind of far. It went far. I mean, what I mean by it went far is that um, I didn't get to church. I think I was out of church for three weeks. I think I was out a month. I think I didn't get back to church until December. 
And in, in betwixt all that time, you know, just like I said, I returned back and I was thinking that people was going to be missing me and I would get that recognition, you know what I'm saying? And I should have knew better than that because they don't never recognize me in nothing else. They only recognize me when somebody else say something. So I should have knew better than that. But I just figured, you know, evangelists. If you ain't care nothing about me as Sharon Jordan, then maybe as the evangelist of of the body of Christ, then maybe y'all would have missed me. Man, them kids, them kids, you hear me? <laughs> them people ain't think nothing about me. Somebody else was there and everybody has something to say about that. I have to say, and I'm going to say this on tape, I have to say that Elder Robinson... Did give on it to me. Did give on it to me. She did went around the protocol, and then she would say and give on it to our advantage, Jordan. I, if I'm correct, I believe she said, "Glad to have you back." You know, I ain't hear nothing about you was missed and all this. Then they went into the other lady. Oh, we thank God for this person's testimony. Oh, she really. That of course God is gonna do that. God is gonna do that for His people. For His people. But nobody didn't want to say, of course we was going to see Evangelist Jordan because God does that for his people. When you are sick and you depend on the Lord, he will come in and he's going to bring you out of it. Ladies, if I didn't have no encouragement and within myself, I ain't get it from them. And I, just like I said, I ain't got no shame in my game letting people know, telling the truth. Because I ain't going to sit here and say that my family, my, my church family loves me. Because they don't. They don't. I don't care how much they say they do. They don't. And I'm the type of person, I don't, you're supposed to be saying something for the Lord. You ain't got no business lying. You see what I'm saying? And my Bible says if you resist the devil, he's going to flee from you. And I resist him. I stay away from him. Because, see, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want that negative spirit. And it, it's, it's a, I'm going to be honest. It's a whole lot of negativity that goes on in churches. Not just my church and churches in general. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, I ain't going to say nothing about no spirit of God and this and that, the spirit and all that. No, because you can have all kinds of spirits in you. And people can say the spirit of God and they ain't got no spirit of God. So I'm going to call it what it is the Holy Ghost. He said to go in the upper room and wait and I'm going to send you the promise which is going to be the Holy Ghost. Which will lead and guide you into all truth. Bring things to your remembrance. This is what the Holy Ghost does. Okay? So when you see somebody acting indifferent, when you see somebody out of place, check their Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? So, mmm. So, I feel that all of that happened, all my sickness, all my teeth missing and taken out because I had my teeth out. My teeth was out for three, five months because they started working March. I got my teeth in July, March, April, May, June, July, four months. And I got it like the end of July. So now, I thought I was going to have my, my teeth in time to... Let me see, March, April, what happened? Women's Day. I thought I was going to have my teeth in time for Women's Day. Mind you, I had an offer to preach before Women's Day. They had me, somebody texted me and asked, said that their mother wanted me to speak, told me to get. Now, they didn't say, oh, we want to use you. And uh, my mother suggested, you know, they, it, it gave me the impression that they didn't want me to preach. They just doing it because the mother said so. So, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a lot of advice to preach when I ain't had no teeth. When I ain't had no teeth. So, um, I, um, I couldn't accept it. I texted the person back and told them. I said, well, I have to see. I'm, I'm, I'm having dental work in my mouth, and I have to see, you know, whether they're going to be finished by that time. To and people ain't finished until July. I mean, until, yeah, until July. So I didn't get, this is why I said God was in the mix. 
I um, got sick. I couldn't do what the people wanted me to do. Right? I preach every, not every fifth Sunday, the fifth Sunday every year, either in March or April, I get to preach. Right? That is my Sunday to preach. So, I got to preach that fifth Sunday. The week before that fifth Sunday, I went to the dentist. And I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I had to preach the fifth Sunday. I wasn't even thinking about that. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I had no thought that when they go to take teeth out, I wasn't even thinking that when they go to take my teeth out, I ain't going to have no teeth in my mouth. So what are you going to do? You can't be talking. to I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking, I was looking it down in terms of one tooth or two tooths being taken out in the back and that's it, right? So when I went to go get the teeth out, then that's when the explanation came to me. Oh, no, we're going to be taking this teeth out and we taking out this teeth and the teeth and the, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. So they said, well, you got two options. We could take, we could take them out. I said, you're going to take them all out today? They said, no, 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 no. We'll take out some today, and then you'll have to come back, and we'll take out more. And I was saying to my, I was like, oh, okay. But in my head, I was like, mm-mm. Because if y'all leave any space between these teeth being taken out, I'm not coming back. God knew I was not coming back. So he said, now the next option is, is that we can go for approval and put you to sleep and just take them all out. I said, you know what? We're going to go with that one. He said, all right, so we're going to put it in and we'll call you when approval go through. So that week, that Sunday was the day I preached. So I went and I preached that Sunday. Right? That Monday, they called me up and told me that it was approved and they made the appointment to me for Tuesday or Wednesday. And I went in. And this was March. I went in. No, this had to be April. Let me see. March 5th, Sunday. Let me go. This is 18, 2000. No, this is 2019. So let me go January, February. Here we go. March. March 17. So 30. Okay, so I went the week of the 25th. And... Oh, I know. I was supposed to preach the Good Friday. I think I did preach Good Friday. I preached Good Friday, and I preached that 31st, which was the fifth Sunday for me to preach. Right, so I got to preach twice. Pastor Bagley, Pastor Bagley had texted me and asked me to preach, but I couldn't do it. No, I think I did preach. She had hers on a Thursday. I'm talking about 2019, maybe that's it. But anyway, let's, let's stay, stay focused, Siobhan, stay focused. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're talking about preaching. So March the 31st, which was the fifth Sunday, if I'm correct, fifth Sunday, yep. First, okay, first, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the 31st of March, I preach. So I think. Easter, oh, no, 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 right, 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 so I couldn't even preach April, because I ain't had no teeth, <clears throat> so I had no participation, people was t- texting me, asking me, was I going to preach, they need to preach, I was like, no, 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 I won't be doing it. okay, so, it was April, right, because they took out my teeth around the 2nd or 3rd of April, right, around that time. Oh, took them all out. So now we had April. I was going back and forth. Like twice a month I would go, and they would check my gums, and they do impressions. See, because they had to wait that long. So in between time, for the bones to heal. Not so much as the gums, but the bone. Because, see... When your teeth is taking out your gum strength, because now it has to close up those spots that no longer has teeth. And they got to be hard enough to hold the gums, to hold these, to put the teeth in so that when you chew, it don't hurt, right? So, 
So it was April, was one month, May, was two months. I don't even have it in there. I thought I had put, I thought I had put in the days that I went to the doctor. June, and then, okay, so I thought I was going to have my teeth by the youth explosion, which was the 9th of June. No, I had went. Yes, I did go. Tried them all. That's when they came, and they had a whole full set and a whole bottom set. And I got a partial in the bottom, and the top is the full set, right? So when when I looked at it, because they bring the teeth in, and they let it sit there, and then the doctor come in and put it in your mouth, right? So when I saw it, I was like, why is there a full set? I don't have a full set. So I'm like, what are they doing? They done messed up. So when the dentist came in, dentist man came in, he took the teeth, and he went to put it in my mouth, and he stopped. He went to go in, and he said, oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. He went behind me. I know he had to get himself together. I know he did. I know he did. He had to get himself together. And I know in his head he was saying, oh, my God, I messed up. But I was patient. He said, all right, give me a few minutes, Miss Jordan. No, he called me my name. He said, give me a few minutes, Sharon. I said, all right, do what you got. In my head, I'm saying, do what you got to do. Get it right. And he left out. On the screen, they had a full set person. So that means that they had my, they had the wrong, the wrong x-rays up. Right? So then he came back. He said, we're going to do another impression. I said to myself, I know you is, because I don't know whether it was you or the lab that messed it up. And they had to go and do a whole full impression. And I was showing them, when I went back again, I was showing them. I had took a picture of the first time that they put the teeth in my mouth. And then I took a picture of the second time when they came. I said, they don't look the same. I said, what are you doing? I said, uh-uh. I said, just don't look right. I said, just don't look right. I said, why is it looking like this? I said, why is, it, why is it looking like this? Let me tell you something. Bad dentists and they workers, they, it was one particular, because I guess he had an assistant that worked with him. And they, she said, Ms. Jordan, he, she said, we was working on this. We was trying to figure out what was going on. We was going to get this right. And this right here, see, they had, they had, let me tell you, the first partials that I had, right, I had the gold in my mouth, but it was a clip because I had a tooth here and a tooth here. That tooth over here broke off, and the tooth here had broke. So I had a tooth up in my gums here, and then I had a tooth that broke off from me wearing fake gold in my mouth. Over here, this tooth over here, right, had broke off. It was all the way up in here. And I think that was the worst tooth that was in there because, see, this side was okay. When I first got them, I was able to chew. I was chewing. I chewed more on this side than this side, right? And then one day, I think it was like a week, two weeks ago, I started feeling some pressure. And just, I think it was like maybe about three days ago, I felt it a little bit. I felt pressure, like all the way down, you know? And maybe that's why I had such a bad headache. Because the, I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, because the gums and the jaws, that's why I couldn't get implants. Well, I never asked about implants, but I know my jaws is not, is not, you know, because I had done right now all, all up in here. So your teeth is connected to your jaw. So when they rotten out, that's part of your jaw that's getting messed up. You see what I'm saying? And the thigh here, this here, is your bone. All this is your bone. And this is where your teeth is in your head, right? So now if all of that get messed up and they got to pull those teeth out, because, see, you got some teeth that... That I don't know if anybody ever got their tooth pulled on the side, right? There is like a fang. You ever watch um, vampires? Those teeth that look like fangs, they go all the way up here. All the way up in here. So when they go to take those teeth out, 
They got to go all the way up. If it's not loose for them to pull it out by themselves, they got to split the gum and go up in there and pull that out. So mine's was rotten. So just think they had to split that gum and they had to go up in there and they had to clean it. So see, you don't, I didn't feel it because I was asleep and I didn't feel it after the fact because once, once the, the tooth is, see, I never really had, cause mm, I'm just talking so fast cause it's so much in my head. But they had, back in the day, I had got a root canal, right? So a, a lot of those tooth in the front, I didn't feel nothing because the root canal was in the front. So root canal is they, if I'm correct, they take the nerve out, the gum from the tooth, right? So when they take the, the nerve out, they don't too much save the tooth. Because when they look, because they could tell, when they look up in there in your x-ray, they could see whether or not that tooth is going to rotten out over time. So they get root canals. So the root canal is to keep you from having pain because they take that nerve out because they know that later on you're going to feel it. So they took the nerve out from all, all the way over here. I ain't had no nerve. My nerve was in the back. No nerve, right? So it rotten up in there, and they had to go all the way up in there. So that way, now, when they went up in there and pulled all them rotten pieces of teeth out, right, I ain't feel nothing because I ain't got no nerve. But as the jawbone, jawbone began to heal, I would feel the pressure. I'm telling you, it felt like somebody was up in my head pressing down in my mouth. Because, you know, they got to take your mouth all, all, all like, uh, they got to do all that when they in your mouth. So they was all up in there pushing and pushing. And that's what I was, and they must have was pushing all on my face, all in my eye. Because I'm telling you, I felt that bad boy. I felt that bad boy. And I was like, oh, my God. I would be on the train and I would feel, I said, Lord, please don't let me pass out. It wasn't a hurting. It didn't hurt. It just felt like. It just felt like, let me see if I can explain it. It just felt like somebody was pressing me like that and just kept going, and they kept going. And then eventually I was gonna be like the, I was gonna fall asleep. So I don't know whether that was the anesthesia leaving. You see what I'm saying? But I know it was a lot of pressure. And I realized, okay, so now, I realized that the reason why I was feeling that was because this side of my mouth was healing. You see what I'm saying? Even though I had a tooth up in here and a broken tooth up in there, it was this tooth up here that must have was the hardest for them to get out because I didn't feel nothing over here. So this side, I had noticed that when I would chew on it, I would feel something up in the gum like. And I was saying to myself, why am I feeling something in my gums? I'm not supposed to feel nothing because they done took all them teeth out. But what was happening is that that part of my gum had to heal so that the tooth that's on top of that gum, where that tooth was, was at one time in my life, I have, to put, I have to put pressure on that. And that was up in here. So when I would chew on it, ooh, you talking about something was hurting, but I would chew. And then I, would start, I had to start saying, I said, you know what, I got to start chewing on that side because if I don't, then I'm going to always chew on this side. And then there was a moment, a while, that I would always, I can't even do it now. But there was a way I would do my mom, something like that. And it looked like when I would talk, I don't, I don't think it does it now. It would look like my mouth was twisted where it was supposed to be straight like this. But it would look like it was like this, you see? And that was because this side of my mouth hadn't healed. And so subconsciously, my brain was telling my tongue not to, to mess with that side. Don't mess with that side. That side ain't healed. So push all the food on that side. So now I want to get something so I can show you. Let me see. Let me get me an m and &M. So I can show you now. 
what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna take this salmon out. See, automatically I'll come over to the side. But then I can bring it over here and eat. No problem. I'm training myself to chew more on this side so that I can get used to it and it becomes a habit like it is on this side. Because there's all American. I want to put it over here. But, see, I'm going to start it some now. I love myself some Eminem. Okay, so I need to get myself ready for school. And we will have our form. Service start and we my class off at 7. So I leave here. By 4 30. I'm good. I'm hungry. So that is the story behind my sickness. And people won't understand that. God will put you sick if he feels like. You, if he feels like he don't want you to do something, but well, I'm going to talk about me. He knew that I'm very obedient. People ask me if they can do whatever they want to do. That's my nature. Do whatever they want to do to me. And I'll still talk to you. You ask me, can you do this? Can you go here? Can you give me them? Impulse. I'm doing it because it's in me. So, sometimes God will come to your rescue so that you won't get hurt. And people don't believe God will do something to you to keep you from doing, I'm going to say it like this, from doing the right thing for somebody else, yet still, who you're doing it for is not going to appreciate it and going to treat you bad. And it's going to make you look bad. So you know what? I'm going to sit you down myself. And if I make you sick where you can't do nothing, everybody's going to say whatever they want to say. Oh, she's sick because of this or she ain't sick. Because that's what I got. Somebody told me that somebody said, is she really sick? Is she really sick? And that's how I knew that people didn't believe that I was sick. That I was just saying that to get out of a situation. But, all right, that's it for now. Talk to y'all later.